Welcome to Overthinking in Your Underwear. This is Lindsay, and today we are overthinking Valentine's Day, the most corporate holiday in the world. So whether you're single, coupled up, or it's complicated, we can overthink this day together. Talk about its origins, talk about what it's me, what it means, and I'm going to tell you a little Valentine's Day story. So, oh gosh, you guys, February is taken over by Valentine's Day, is it not? Like starting at the end of March, everything turns pink in Target. Pink and red, that deep tones of red. I kind of enjoy that, I'll be honest, because it's a color palette I really like. We immediately shift off Christmas and it's Valentine's Day. Retail is ready for the next thing they can sell to us and they're going to sell romance to us, right? If you're not someone who celebrates, it can be tough. Even if you are, I know it can give you the ick after a while. Here's the thing I think has happened with Valentine's Day. And if you're someone who loves Valentine's Day, first of all, let me know what happened to you. No, I'm kidding. If you're someone who loves Valentine's Day, I just have not come across you because I feel like single coupled up or it's complicated, most people that I hear from are like, no, I'm just not into it. Even if I'm in a couple, it's just, I don't need that. It's too much pressure. We don't celebrate. Maybe we give each other a card, but we don't even want to go out to the restaurant and have all the balloons and the flowers. It's just too much. Like the whole thing has just become too much. Um, And here's kind of my theory on it because you know I'm going to have a theory. You know I'm going to have overthought it. It's the required romance of it all. When you know when you go to like a a work event and there's like some forced fun, it's never really fun. February 14th is the day you're going to act romantic. And whether that is with a partner, it's a lot of pressure. You know, if you're in a long-term relationship, you're going through the day-to-day of We are raising kids together. We are going through our jobs. We're paying the bills. We're building a life. We're going to stop and be rom-com romantic on this day, February 14th. It's actually a lot of pressure. It's not just single people. I think it's everyone that it's the required romance that I think can probably bring a lot of pressure to people. And that's why a lot of people, I think, push back on February 14th. It's good for people who are like in their in a new couple phase and you're being romantic all the time and it's just another excuse to show how cute and romantic you are. If that's the phase you're in, I'm happy for you. I'm I'm happy there's a date on the calendar for you. I think it should just be called New Couples Day. Like rename it. It's not Valentine's Day. It's New Couples Day. And like eight-year-olds. Eight-year-olds love it because you can like go to target with your mom and get the little valentine's day packs and then you give your class valentine's which actually i think you don't do anymore i think it became problematic like everything did at some point where people were i don't know what someone a mom a mom let me know because i think i think you don't give valentine's to your class anymore is that correct i'm not sure in our day you go pick out your valentine's give it to your class and get candy. And so you loved Valentine's when you were like an eight-year-old. Okay, there's a lot of noise out there about you're single on Valentine's Day, woe is me. But I think there's a lot of pressure on everyone around Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is celebrated tomorrow. So February 14th is celebrated as St. Valentine's Day in various Christian denominations, uh, has been for many, for a long time. So Wikipedia has a really good deep dive on the origins of Valentine's Day. I'll paraphrase it for you. St. Valentine's show up in religious texts all over. If you've been to any kind of church and if you've been in religious schools and if you've studied any kind of, you know, Catholicism and that kind of thing. So February 14th is celebrated as St. Valentine's Day in numerous Christian denominations throughout history. Stuff You Should Know probably did a really good What is Valentine's Day? Just a side note. So anyway, in the United States, the first mass-produced Valentines of embossed paper lace were produced and sold shortly after 1847 by Esther Howard. Her father operated a large book and stationery store. 
She took her inspiration from an English valentine she had received from a business associate of her father's. In 1868, the British chocolate company Cadbury created fancy boxes, a decorated box of chocolates, in the shape of a heart for Valentine's Day. That had some longevity. These heart-shaped boxes quickly became associated with the holiday. In the second half of the 20th century, the practice of exchanging cards with boxes of chocolates and all manner of gifts became custom. That's how Valentine's Day originated. And what I think is interesting about that is because we always call it a Hallmark holiday, which clearly I think Hallmark probably popularized it and made it really mainstream and made it accessible and mainstream and gave us all the cards because they're... As a Kansas City girl, Hallmark is literally down the street. I could walk by it when I go get a cup of cup of coffee. So super supportive of the Hallmark holiday. I always think it's so it's interesting because there's so many things we think and we say, and then they're not really true. I thought Hallmark actually created this holiday, which uh, is funny to me. I don't know. It's funny to me. That's just a little bit of background on um, this day you're about you've this ba- this day that we've been inundated with. So I'm going to get into a little bit of this worst Valentine's Day story I ever had. I mean, we all love a terrible story, right? I mean, you all, everyone loves sitting around with their girlfriends and hearing the guess what happened story. And this is kind of a guess what happened story. Also, I have some really good kind of learnings from it at the end. This is the first blog I ever wrote, actually. Not the first blog I ever wrote, but I started the podcast. I started writing a blog. This is the first one I ever wrote, and I have some tips at the end of this. So if you're like, I just don't want to hear her bad story, you can fast forward to the end because I actually have some kind of actionable tips you can use in your in your own dating life and in your own even single life. If this was a movie, here's the text I'd have on screen at the beginning. All of this is completely true, except for the parts I totally made up. That's from some, that's from something. I can't remember what. And I only have that because this was so long ago. I'm probably filling in the blanks with my own imagination and with my own bad memory. So, so that's why I feel the need to give you that disclaimer. Plus, it's funny, isn't it? I wonder, uh, I can't remember where I saw that, but it's funny. It's not mine. Stole it. Worst Valentine's Day I ever had. Feel free to tell me yours too, because I love a bad story. Isn't that terrible to say? But you know we all do. This is the story, and then I'm going to do this annoying thing where I probably start and stop, narrate some things in between. Okay, here we go. So it's Valentine's Day notoriously the worst day of the year. And the guy I'm dating, who we'll call Skip, says he's going on an unplanned work trip. I'm not surprised. I mean, the trip itself is surprising. His job, working out of his dad's basement, doesn't offer much out-of-state travel up until this moment. But I'm not surprised by the whole running of Valentine's Day scenario. That I expect from the worst day on the calendar. So I'm going to stop there. (laughs) This is the thing about Valentine's Day, though, you guys. It kind of is a line in the sand for relationships, isn't it? Because there's no other holiday that shows you who you're dating more. Christmas, your partner can kind of say, well, I have to be with my family. I have to fly back and see my sister. There's all kinds of, there's all kinds of loopholes they can get around if they're being sneaky. They can get away with not being with you on Christmas or Thanksgiving, even if you've been together for a really long time. They can say, my mom's really weird about having people over, all kinds of things, okay? Valentine's Day, it kind of draws a line in the sand. They either have to have an unplanned work trip, like I just said, or they have to do some schizophrenic running from one partner to another partner if they're seeing two people at once. They have to put up or shut up on Valentine's Day, right? Valentine's Day is on the calendar. You're questioning your relationship. You're going to know the answer on February 14th. So here we go. Skip tells me he's traveling for Valentine's Day weekend. Who has a work trip on a weekend? All my suspicions I've been gathering for so long feel like they've culminated in this moment. As his plane leaves the ground, 
I sprung into action. Now, this is the early 2000s. So the word cyber stalking isn't a skill you add to your resume with pride. You still feel dirty creeping through the windows of other people's social media, like a neighbor with a fetish. As the Pinterest sayings go, don't look for something you're not prepared to find. And find I did. Skip's Facebook page. Yeah, this is where we are, you guys. This is where we are in time. It was his Facebook page. And that's all I had to look at. I was, we were almost in my space. Skip's Facebook page is adorned with likes and comments from a woman whose name I know and whose state he's flying toward. Before he lands, I pull out my phone and text Skip two simple words. Pamela McPrettyFace. That's not her real name. You're not on a business trip. You're visiting Pamela McPrettyFace. He calls me immediately. I don't need to type the next few sentences because over the last few years, We've learned about this behavior through TikToks, blogs, and even Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Oh, the gaslighting. Calm down, he says. Nothing is going on, he argues. You're crazy, he insists. The gaslight statement that burns brightest is, do you want to talk to my dad? Can you imagine? Yeah, hi, this is Skip's girlfriend. Is he really in a meeting or tossing around in bed with a woman whose hair looks flawless in the morning? Of course, I never ask to speak to anyone. If you reach a point in your relationship where references are required, get out. The next morning, the worst day of the year arrives. Skip calls to say, happy Valentine's Day, and informs me he'll be out of cell phone range for most of the day. Right, so now he has a meeting on Valentine's Day at the bottom of a well. Later, I learn out of cell phone range is on a hike with Pamela. Over the course of the afternoon, my brain moves from mild suspicion to the certainty of a conspiracy theorist on Reddit. I know in my Valentine heart of hearts, I'm right about this faux trip. I'm right about him. I'm right about our relationship. I text, no response. I dial his number, straight to voicemail. I leave a message. I know, I say, in the low, gravelly voice of a B-movie stalker. More calls, more texts, dead silence. In those situations, the phone will ring. The answer will arrive. But logic and patience are far from your zip code, and you feel the minutes as a somatic symptom rushing through your body. I pace around my apartment, skin crawling with anxiety, and stuck in a purgatory of my own making. I could detach from the situation right now, walk away, and never answer another emoji from Skip. Thumbs down, dude. But as the real housewives say, I need receipts to nail Skip and bury this relationship six feet under. Again, I open my laptop to his Facebook page. I see the likes and comments from Pamela McPrettyFace. I click on her profile and hover over the message button. This is the only way he won't lie to me and to her. I can't remember the exact phrases all these years later, but it went something like this. I know you are with him right now. And I know he will lie to you. He will tell you I'm crazy and you will believe him. I just need to know what's going on. I wish you the best, but one day he will do the same thing to you and you will remember this email and it won't seem so crazy. I can't say if she remembered the email, but I did hear their relationship played out similar to ours. And I'm genuinely sorry she had to endure that. Home from the hike and back in cell phone range, Pamela and Skip are greeted with a phone full of texts and a, and a Facebook message Pamela never pictured on her romantic weekend. Pamela did what I assumed she'd do, because women do what we do, and I love that about us. She confronted Skip and tells him to call me. It's the most honest seven words I've ever heard out of his mouth, which is how I know she's standing right there. Hello, it's me. Yes, I'm with her, he says. That's it. He calls later that night. Or maybe the next day. And I detonate the line with every expletive ever fired. I carry on so long I'm grasping for insults that don't even land. You're so athletic it's weird. No one likes a guy with perfect cat. I stutter toward the end. Here's the thing. A relationship was all but over. It had been one bad scene after another for a long time. Both of us should have been moving on and into romantic Valentine's Day weekends. But he kept insisting we were working on ourselves. We weren't dating other people, and we were made for one another. Lying was the real violation. Move on when you want, but don't make the other person sit in the dressing room as you shop around for a better fit. 
The anger turns to sadness pretty fast, and I become stuck in a wallow. Over and over, I ask myself, what does she have that I don't? This woman is gorgeous, stand out, and exceptional. She's a model, and I can see her portfolio online, and I understand what he sees in her. It's right there, gazing back at me in a sultry swimsuit shot. I took this breakup as an overall evaluation of my self-worth, my appearance, and my value as a human. Get it together! So what's next? Where's the lesson? Don't drop it here and ruin my Valentine's Day. Don't worry. We're going to get into it. So that's the story um, of the worst Valentine's Day ever by me. I'm sure you have worse ones and I want to hear them. A few things about that that I, I kind of already say. I don't tell you that just because it's a juicy story. I tell you that because there were so many things I learned from that and so many things I would never put myself in the situation again. And I think we can we can all learn from it. First of all is trust your instincts. If you think someone's lying, they probably are. Sometimes you have to. I think with with Skip, there were so many little breadcrumbs along the way I did, I felt like, like I say in there, like I needed receipts. Like I just had to, I had to like play it out to the end. Like I saw it at the beginning. I saw these little breadcrumbs around along the way. And I really felt like I had to like play it out to the end. I had to catch, I had to, I had to catch the, I had to catch him in the act. I don't know why I was doing that. It was such a uh, self-sabotaging thing. I don't know why I had to do that. Like trust your instincts You don't need to torture yourself till the end. If you believe something is bad, it probably is. Don't believe a story simply because you want it to be true. From the beginning, I saw the crash coming miles down the road and gunned it toward the ravine like Thelma and Louise. I don't remember who was driving Thelma or Louise, but whatever. When you see your exit signs in the relationship, which I saw from the beginning with him, take them. Your self-worth is too precious to stay and enjoy the view. That's what I was doing for a long time because I saw these red flags so early and then I stayed and that Valentine's Day scenario was all my fault. It really was. You know, I'm not saying that obviously what he did was not wrong, but I'm saying putting myself in that situation, I put myself there when I could have gotten off the ride so much, so much sooner. Be careful with yourself is what I'm saying. Be careful with yourself and don't let yourself just go along for the ride when you know you should get off. I did that thing of what does she have that I don't have? Why did he do that? The question is, the question shouldn't be what does she have that I don't? That's the wrong question. The question's really what's up with my self-worth that I let myself be in that situation? It's not about her. It's not about him. It's not about them. It's about me, like use it as a lesson, pick it up, put it down, use it as a lesson. How did you end up in a situation where you were cheated on and scouring Facebook on Valentine's Day in a low self-worth spiral? Instead of looking at the girl's Facebook profile and wondering, well, what does she have that I don't? Should I change my hair? Like all these like really superficial things, like use it as a learning lesson of like, wait, okay, how did I get here? Like where, how did I end up in such a low self-worth place? And it, it has nothing to do with the two of them. Like on, it's on him why he's cheating and why he, why he's acting as a person who cheats and is has less integrity in a relationship. That's not on you and that's on him to figure out. And I say this a little bit in um, how to get over someone is instead of focusing on if you're in if you find yourself in a situation like this, instead of focusing on, oh my gosh, this situation happened or what does she have that I don't or why did he do that? Again, who cares why he did that? That's on him. Use all of this energy that you have, this big breakup energy, as I have called it before, and put it towards something you care about so you're not caught in the past. Maybe it's an art project or a new practice like yoga or some passion you've always wanted to pursue. Focus your energy there. Finally, time will pass. You can't fake it or force it, but finally, you'll put some time between the event, whatever it is. And you, when you retell the story of the Valentine's Day massacre to a group of people on a podcast, 
It doesn't hurt anymore. Tragedy plus time, right? So that's my Valentine's Day story. Whatever you are doing tomorrow, I hope you make it full of self-love. Take a bath. Take a walk with your dog. Remember why you love yourself. Write in your journal a little love note to yourself. Another little exercise I think could be, can be good on, on Valentine's Day just to remember like maybe you write down like self-love is. Like for me, I'd be like self-love is probably the things I reference on here because I'm just pulling them for my life, right? Self-love is doing yoga, spending time with my dog, spending time with my family, going for a walk, journaling, meditating, um, writing. So maybe write down like self-love is and write those things, kind of evaluate if you ha- if you are spending enough time doing them, do them, do them on February 14th, um, whatever those things are. Try to incorporate more of them into your life over the next month, over the next year. Valentine's Day doesn't need to be about required romantic love. It can be about self-love. Thank you so much for overthinking with me this week. Until next time, wishing you all good thoughts.